Charity, fame, and infamy, all these various qualities of living beings are created by me alone. So we've been reading this first part and we're almost finished. We just have the last three paragraphs. There's three paragraphs at the end. We'll read them tonight. Yasha, of oh, Yasha, fame should be according to Lord Chaitanya, who said that a man is famous when he is known as a great devotee. That is real fame. If one has become a great man in Krishna consciousness and it is known, then he is truly famous. One who does not have such fame is infamous. All these qualities are manifest throughout the universe in human society and in the society of the demigods. There are many forms of humanity on other planets and these qualities are there. Now, for one who wants to advance in Krishna consciousness, Krishna creates all these qualities. But the person, but the person develops them himself from within. One who engages in the devotional service of the Supreme Lord develops all the good qualities as arranged by the Supreme Lord. Of whatever we find, good or bad, the origin is Krishna. Nothing can manifest itself 
in this material world which is not in Krishna. That is knowledge. Although we know that things are differently situated, we should realize that everything flows from Krishna. Om Magyana Timarandasya Gyana Janashtavakaya Chakshurunya Nidhanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Vanchakalpata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patitana Pavanebhyo Vaishnavebhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shiva Sadi Gaura Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So Lord Krishna has been describing these different qualities and he says they all have, they're all created by him alone. The last two qualities were fame and infamy. So fame and infamy. Lord Krishna is also, it's one of Lord Krishna's opulences, fame. Lord Krishna is described as Bhagavan. In the Bhagavad Gita, when Lord Krishna speaks, then it's described Sri Bhagavan Uvacha. So Lord Krishna is known as Bhagavan, one who has opulences. And these opulences are six in number, and fame is one of the six, right? Wealth, beauty, fame, knowledge, strength, and renunciation. These are the six opulences. And Lord Krishna has these qualities greater than anyone else. No one can equal or be greater than Krishna in any of these qualities. So one of the qualities which is mentioned here is fame. There are famous people in the world, just like there's the man who developed the Microsoft, right? Bill Gates is a very famous man. And then somebody else is famous, so let's see here in Malaysia, of course you have the Prime Minister, Mahathir, very famous because he was the Prime Minister for many years and even in his old, in the 90s he became again Prime Minister. So a famous man, there's famous people around the world. Uh, there, in, in, there was the famous boxer, Muhammad Ali, he was very famous. Everybody knew his name. And there's a famous football player also, uh, Maradona. He's so famous that the devotees, they go to Bangladesh. And when they go to Bangladesh, you know, they, they have programs in Bangladesh. There's, there's a lot of Hindus, although Bangladesh is a majority Muslim country, but there's still many Hindus live there and they have programs for men, the, Hindi, the Hindu people and uh, they will do some, they bring this devotee Marichi. There's this one devotee who, is, who travels with the, the party when he goes to Bangladesh. His name is Marichi. He's from Argentina. You know, he's from Argentina. So they bring him on the stage. And, he, <laughs> and when, when, when he says, I am from Argentina, then everybody knows who is from Argentina. They know this football player from Argentina. You know? They say, oh, Maradona. <laughs> they, all, they all know. It's so famous, you know. But that kind of fame, it, it's very limited. It, it doesn't last very long. You know, for some few years, it's famous but not forever. 
you can see how famous the Lord Krishna is, that he spoke the Bhagavad Gita 5,000 years ago, and it's still famous today. Lord Krishna is still famous today. Temples are there for the worship of Lord Krishna. And that is not limited to just this planet, that Lord Krishna is famous all over the creation. Throughout the material world there are many universes, and in all the universes there are Brahmas and Shivas, and they're all great demigods, and they also worship the Supreme Lord Krishna. They know that above all the demigods, there is the one Supreme Personality of Godhead. So, this is the position of Lord Krishna. He enjoys great fame. On the other hand, some people are infamous. They have a bad name. They don't have a good name. There are people who also have bad names. Like Kamsa is a bad name, right? We've heard of Kamsa, King Kamsa, who wanted to kill Krishna and he had many demon friends and they were trying to kill Krishna. So Kamsa was infamous. And then in the times of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, there were rulers who were infamous. Just like after Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, there was Aurangzeb. Aurangzeb was infamous. He was so cruel, he put his own father into prison and he killed his brothers. And so he, he was known to be a very cruel person. But he lived a long time, he lived till he was 90 something. But bad name, people feared him. People were very fearful of him. So some people are famous and some people are infamous. Now all of this is the creation of Lord Krishna. And these qualities are found in human beings. You, you don't, we, we don't describe you know, animals in that way. They're not really famous. They don't have these kind of qualities on villains and charitable, you know, any animal, charitable, you know, cannot be. These qualities are for human beings. And Srila Prabhupada explains here in the purport that human beings are not only on this planet, but there are other planets where human beings are also residing. Sometimes, of course, people, they, they don't recognize this, they don't admit this. Uh, generally, in the Christian tradition, they think humans are only on this planet. There's no life any other place. But in the Vedic literature, we learn that there's life all over the creation. And there are many different levels of planets within the universe. Just like above the earth planet, there is the heavenly planets. On the higher planets, the heavenly planets, and we see in Chinese culture also, they often speak about Tian Tang, right? Tian Tang. People often describe their apartment building as <laughs> heaven. Even in Bombay, in Bombay they, they built at their temple in Juhu, they built some uh, extension onto the temple and they called it heaven on earth. <laughs> so, heaven. <laughs> you know, actually it's marriage halls and function, where they have functions and everything. And so, they earn a big income to support the temple from this marriage hall. It's a big thing in India, isn't it? Marriage hall. People make a lot of money. So, heaven. There's higher planets, the heavenly planets. And the Vedas tell us even above heaven there are other planets. 
You can go above heaven. There's four other planets which are existing when even heaven is destroyed. The, this planet Earth is in the area called Bhumandala. Just like if you chant the Gayatri Mantra, the Brahma Gayatri, it goes Om Bhu Bhuva Swa, right? Om Bhu Bhuva Swa. Everybody knows Brahma Gayatri Mantra. It's, it's not just... <laughs> <laughs> In, indigestion problems. <laughs> it, it's not, the Gaitri Mantra is not chanted aloud. But still, it, people in general, they know the Brahma Gaitri Mantra. So uh, it begins like that. Om Bhu Bhuva Swa. Bhu is Bhuloka. This earth is in Bhu Mandala. And above Bhu, Bhu Mandala is Bhuva, Bhuva Loka, higher planets above the earth planet. And above the Bhuva Loka is Swa, Swarga. Swarga means heaven in Sanskrit. That's a Sanskrit word for heaven, Swa. So heavenly planet. So three levels within the universe. But there's others. There's others also. There's lower planets, there's the hellish planets at the bottom of the universe, which are below Bhumandala. So in the bottom of the universe, you don't get sunlight. It's dark all the time. Just like some places in Russia, Mataji knows, there's some places in Russia. And in Europe even, if you go to Finland, Finland, uh, northern, Scandinavia, they will call it the land of the midnight sun. They have, they have sun in the midnight, in the summer. And in the winter, no sun. <laughs> That's uh, Scandinavia, not the northern hemisphere, northern Russia and like that. There's no sun, you don't get much sun in the, in the winter, very little. But and you get more long sun, be very late at night, will still be sunlight, right till midnight. Sun sets later. So some places are like that. And in the bottom of the universe, it's all dark. There's no light there at all. And people are living there, just like the Asuras. Bhagavad Gita describes there are two kinds of people. There's the Devas and the Asuras, or the Suras and the Asuras. So Suras means those people who have godly qualities. They're obedient to the laws of God. And the Asuras are the ones who are disobedient to the laws of God. So the Asuras, they they're meant to live in the lower region of the universe. Just like Bali Maharaj and Prahlad Maharaj, these people, they're from the family of the Asuras. So their residence is in the lower region of the universe. But it's, it's very opulent. Although it's very dark, it's very opulent. They call it the subterranean heavenly planet. It's heavenly, but it's sub It's in the bottom of the universe. It's dark. It's opulent. There's a lot of precious jewels and gems, and they all wear precious jewels on their head. They have these precious stones, and from these stones, light comes, so they can see. With the help of these stones, they can see. You know, we depend on electricity, but in the times of the Pandavas, in the times of the Pandavas, when the Pandavas were living in Indraprastha, it was all, the palace was, there was no electricity. Everything was lit by jewels. There would be valuable jewels everywhere. And you can see, Prabhupada said, actually he said this, the Indraprastha building is still there, the fort in Delhi, 
in New Delhi, in India, he said they used to have valuable stones, all the jewels were there to light the place. But people came and stole it, you know, the invaders, the British and people like they took it, it, all the wealth away. But that is how people get light. Lord Krishna's palaces, they would be lit by valuable jewels. At night, you want to have some light, so they will have jewels to reflect. In this way there's light. And so the, the lower planets, the bottom of the universe, it's all dark, but it's opulent. At the same time it's very opulent. And, and they have light from all the valuable jewels. So there are humans living in many different places. We're not aware. We don't know about people say, is there light on other planets? But sometimes there are things called UFOs, unidentified flying objects, right? UFOs. People see things, they see sometimes spaceships appear in the sky and they're there for some time. Some Sometimes people say, even sometimes they see a spaceship land. <laughs> so, there are many things like this recorded in history about unidentified flying objects. And people cannot give explanations for them. There are many things on the planet which are difficult to explain. <laughs> Just like in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, there's one island there in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. And the island is, on the island, they built these incredible structures. And nobody knows who, who built them or how they got there. Even you go to England, there's a place in England, it's called Stonehenge. And in Stonehenge, they have these huge, big stone structures. And nobody knows how they got there. Nobody knows about them. It's, of course, there's many different theories. People speculate, oh, they say like this, like that. So the point is, that there is uh, some proof to show that there's life in other places, not just only on this planet. And Prabhupada said human life is also there on other planets. They're human beings, not only on this planet. We are thinking, you know, we are the controller, we are the create, everything is for us. But we don't always appreciate that there are many living entities all over the creation. And human being, human life is also there in other places. But because of the laws of nature, we're not able to go there. Just like, you know, people say, that did the Americans actually go to the moon? Did they really go to the moon? And it, it's very unlikely that they did go to the moon because so many years, 50 years or more have passed since they were supposed to have gone there and nobody has gone again. So, in fact, even when they tried to go into space, all the people died. Remember, they had the first woman going into space and she lasted about three minutes before the whole thing crashed back into the sea. So, there are many things which are very doubtful. You know, did they... You know, the, the, it's a lot of politics and in the name of politics, people can lie and cheat about anything. They can, and 
and even you you could call it the the biggest the biggest cheat cheat which ever took place. They cheated everyone, saying that they went to the moon, but they didn't actually go. So the, these things are going on in the world, and we're just innocent people, you know, we're just small, we don't really know everything which is going on. We don't know anything really, there's so much on this planet even which we don't know. There are unmatched regions which people don't know, they just don't know, they just don't know what's there. If you go into the Himalayas, into these regions, where the Himalayas, there are regions there, it's just unmanned. Nobody knows about it. There's a region in the Pacific Ocean, it's called the Bermuda Triangle. Oh, it's the Atlantic Ocean. They call it the Bermuda Triangle. And big ships disappear, and airplanes disappear. They go through this area, and people, things just disappear. Nobody, and you never hear of them again. Nobody knows what happens, where they go. So there are many mysteries on this planet. We are thinking we know everything. Oh yes, we know about it. But there's so much we don't know. There's so much on this planet, regions on this planet, which are unmapped and which would, nobody has ever gone into to find out. So we get this kind of information from the Vedas. If we read the Vedic literature, like Srimad Bhagavatam and other literature, it tells us about the universe. It tells us about the different planets which exist, and you can learn about the different types of living entities who are living there. So we have to understand this whole universe is a creation. It's a creation. And creation means a creator. There's a person who designed everything. Just like this, this building, somebody had to design it. There would be architect and there would be engineers and they will come together and plan and, and, do, and arrange to put the building. So the people who design it, they know everything about the, the building. And similarly, the universe, it, it is built in a very systematic manner. We can see there are so many different planets in the universe. And different planets all have different astrological influences. Right? The science of astrology is there, how different planets influence individuals in different ways. So when somebody, what, what people can check their birth chart, they can look at their birth chart and they can see the position of the different stars, and the different planets at the time of their birth and they can understand more about their nature and what they're meant to be doing. So all of these different planets, they all have different influences on people. It's a science. And people apply that science in many different ways. Even in times of war, different politicians they would have their astrologers to tell them differently. What should they do? What, should, what time should they attack? There are good times and there are bad times. There are times when Rahu, Rahu is black, Rahu Kala, the time of Rahu. Rahu is a demon planet. Rahu is a demon. So if it's Rahu, the time of Rahu, it's a very inauspicious time. You don't want to do anything at that time. Just like there's the one day in the year, Akshaya Tritya. Have you heard of the Akshaya Tritya? Yes, oh, the ladies don't know Akshaya Tritya. <laughs> that is the day people like to go and buy gold. 
They will go and buy gold on a shire treaty. And that is a day for investment. People want to begin a business or do business, that they'll open their company that day. It's a very auspicious day in the year, the Akshaya Tritya. And some people, they do marriages even that day. So, why? Why is it us? Because different planets are in certain positions on that day. They make it, it makes it a very auspicious time in the year. You see, Akshaya Tritya. And so, different planets, all, it indicates that there is some control, there's some very complex design in the universe. And people have studied different animals and different insects and nature, and they can show how there's so much intricate design in the bodies of different living entities. The different creatures which are on the planet their bodies are all designed in different ways to facilitate different functions. So it indicates there's some intelligent personalities behind the universe. We do not accept atheistic theories about how the world came about. Just like the scientists' theory well, for one theory they have is the Big Bang Theory, right? Just like we were hearing boom, 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 you know, fireworks going off. So can we say that from this Big Bang, creation will come about? Everything, life will come about? No. Rather, the Big Bang simply destroy. They're simply destroying things. They're not creating any order. They're simply destroyed. You know, when you look at a city like Melaka, so can we say that Melaka, how did it come about? Well, during the night there was a big bang. And we woke up in the morning and there it was! Melaka! <laughs> it just came from the big bang. It's so foolish. We laugh, but this is the theory which is being presented by so-called scientific people. And of course then they have other theories like evolution. And evolution again, it's a theory. Theory means no proof. They don't have any proof of these things. They simply talk and present this theory. Well, it could be like this, and they offer their, you know, oh, there were chemicals, and the chemicals, they interacted together, and they created molecules, and the molecules became DNA and RNA, and these are the building blocks of life. And from the DNA and the RNA, you got very basic life forms, and living entities, and First of all, there's the aquatics from the sea, and then gradually some creatures come out of the sea and they walk on the land, but they're walking on all fours, and then after some time, then they start to stand up. You see, and they stand up on two legs, not on four legs. And they say, in this way, life has evolved from lower life species to higher life species. That is the atheistic theory. But we say no. We say life has evolved down from the higher species, it's evolved down to the lower species. The higher species mean demigods, the devas. They are the higher species. They come first and they create the other living entities. Brahma creates is the creator, the designer, engineer of the living entities. We know the gopis were cursing Brahma that he created eyes which blink and it obstructs the gopis' vision of Lord Krishna. So, design is there. The design is done by people like Lord Brahma. Not 
it, it's not just by chance. There's no such thing as chance. But everything, there's a reason, a cause behind it. So this is stated by Lord Brahma. He says, Anadir Adir Govinda Sava Karanam Karanam. That Lord Krishna is the cause of all causes and he's the origin of all origins. Everything comes from him. So all of these different qualities, they're all coming from Lord Krishna. And people will develop their different qualities according to their natures, according to their particular nature, their karma, you could say, their particular uh, proclivities, their tendencies towards different things will depend on their previous life. The things we do in our previous life, it puts us into this life, we continue. Just like sometimes you see young children, very quickly they can play the piano because they've learned in their previous life. You get, you get people like that, they're, without training they could just sit and play the piano. Not very common, but it happens. You do get people like that. And you see also young children here, like this young boy here, how he can play cartels and how he will chant Hare Krishna because from his previous life he already had devotional inclination. So he is born in a devotee family. So that from his very childhood he can be in the association of devotees. Lord Krishna describes in the Bhagavad Gita different kinds of yogis who were not successful. They were yogis but they were not able to succeed. In other words, they were not able to get out of the material world. So somebody who has practiced yoga for a little while, he will take birth in a wealthy or an, an aristocratic family, and in that way then he will have the opportunity to continue his devotional life. And someone else who would practice yoga for a long time, he will be born in the family of devotees. And Prabhupada said he was born in a family of devotees. So from his childhood, he was vegetarian. Prabhupada said one point there was a, he had a fever and the mother got the doctor to come and the doctor told her, you have to give your child chicken soup. And they were shocked. What? Chicken soup? No, what? Chicken soup? It was, you know, they thought, because she never, they never, they were, they were Vaishnava family, they were vegetarian, and she never cooked chicken soup or anything. But the doctor said, no, you have to do it. Child will die if you don't give chicken soup. So mother was very afraid. And so somehow they, they got some chicken and they cooked it. But then when they put it in the mouth, Prabhupada vomited. The child vomited. And so then the mother and father said, okay, no more. We won't give any more. So they didn't give any more chickens. So that is the kind of thing, you know. And similarly also, Bhakti Prabhupada's spiritual teacher, he was also born like that in a devotee family, the son of Bhakti Vinod Thakur. And so he was brought up to be a devotee. And one day he had taken mangoes before they were offered. And the father said, Oh, you have committed an offense. You did not offer to Krishna. And so the young boy made a vow that for the re I will not eat mango again. And for the rest of his life he didn't eat mangoes. And whenever people brought mangoes he would say, No, I cannot take. I am an offender. So like that, this is, you know, something from the previous life that allows people to 
be born into that situation that they take up the spiritual practice from the beginning of the life. So people have different qualities. These qualities which are being described, they're all the creation of Lord Krishna. And so a devotee, one who is a devotee, he will develop the good qualities. And one who is not a devotee, he will not have good qualities. And so Prabhupada explained, he said he had a little bit argument. One man, one man was in the post office. Prabhupada went to the post office one day. And the man, man in the post office could see that Prabhupada was a sadhu. And he, he said to him, he said, you know, he said, you know, I'm a good man. He said, I never tell any lies, I don't cheat anybody, I don't steal anything, I'm honest, I'm fair, I'm, I don't do any harm to people. Why I need to be a devotee? Why I have to worship God? The man was arguing like that. He said, why I have to worship, why I have to chant mantras and worship God? So, Prabhupada explained, he said, yeah, you may say you are a good person, but you are on the material platform. You see, on the material platform means you are under the modes of nature. So sometimes you are good, but sometimes also bad things also come. Just like somebody is, you know, that maybe they are good, but sometimes they get angry, sometimes they lose, con they, they're not able to control their senses and they get into Maya. Sometimes people are in the mode of goodness or they're very pious, and they go to church or they go to temple, they pray, but they're, they're not really devotees, they have no real devotion. So anytime they can be influenced by the mode of passion or the mode of ignorance. Just like holiday comes and you can see so many people they go to this the how you uh, how you Julian <laughs> the, the next door, this big hotel. The, the lucky they call it lucky hotel. So they are They'll, they'll go there and they'll drink and they'll eat horrible things, you know. And, but they say, I'm a good person. <laughs> and they eat horrible things and they... And, and people say, oh, I'm just having a good time. And they go gambling and do all these things. And they say, I'm a good person. <laughs> They're under the modes of nature. They're controlled by the gunas. So sometimes they're good, but sometimes they're passionate, and sometimes they're in ignorance. We have to understand how the modes of nature work, and how they affect, and we have to get above the modes of nature. Now how to get above the modes of nature? That you have to do by practicing Krishna consciousness. If you engage in the service of Krishna, then you come to the higher platform. You can transcend the modes of nature. So Prabhupada is making this point here at the end of this purport. After describing all these qualities, you want to develop good qualities, you just simply have to develop your devotion. Or you may think, oh, I have to be non-violent, and you do things to be non-violent, Oh, I have to be famous, I have to do things to become famous. Oh, I have to be truthful, I have to... Be. And so you try to cultivate each quality individually. You'll never get there. There will always be some bad qualities there. But if you simply become a devotee, if you just simply cultivate devotion for Krishna, then automatically all the good qualities will come. Everything comes just simply by devotional service. Because the devotion, the, the work, the devotion puts you on the transcendental platform, puts you above the mode. Because the modes 
are under the control of Krishna. Now if you have surrendered to Krishna, we are doing service for Krishna, then Krishna will protect us from the modes. You won't be under the modes of nature anymore. You will be free from them. But if you don't surrender to Krishna, then the modes will get you. <laughs> the modes, the three modes. And you can see Lord Shiva has got the tree shoe. And Durga has got that tree shoe. And Ganesh, Vanayaka, he's also got the tree shoe. They're all carrying that. That's the modes, the miseries of material life. You get all these things because you didn't surrender to Krishna. So don't make the mistake we should surrender to Krishna. Right? Right. You're going to surrender? <laughs> All right, any question? Yes. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Srila Prabhupada. Um, just now in your class, Guru Maharaj, you, you were saying that uh, yogis who are unsuccessful, they get born into devotee families, and you gave the example of Srila Prabhupada and Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Maharaj. Um, I, I, uh, I have an understanding, Guru Maharaj, please correct me if I'm wrong. But it was my understanding that the Srila Prabhupada came from the spiritual world, right? Very much. Uh, he didn't have a past life, right? I thought he descended straight from the spiritual world. Please correct me if I'm mistaken, Guru Maharaj. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, I'm quoting Srila Prabhupada. If you read that section of the Bhagavad Gita, it's in the purport. Prabhupada describes how he was born in a devotee family. And he said also his Guru Maharaj was also born in a devotee family. So it's not by chance that he was born in a devotee family. Somebody is born in a devotee family, they must have been already an advanced yogi. Maybe not quite perfect, as you say, maybe they were, but maybe he could have come from the spiritual world. But we don't know. That's difficult to confirm. Some people may say that, oh, he came from the spiritual world to deliver. Krishna sends pure devotees sometimes into this world to deliver us. But, Sometimes it's great yogis who are not yet fully perfect, but almost perfect, and they come in the family of devotees. So either way, not a big difference. It came from the spiritual world. Some people may say it like that. But if, if he didn't come from the spiritual world, at least he must have been a very advanced yogi, as it said in the Bhagavad Gita. Thank you very much. Yes? Okay. Guru Maharaj, to the Sri Lanka, the businesses of Guru Maharaj, should devotee uh, ask some astrologers about their life. Is, it, uh, is there some point is it or not, or should we just read it to Krishna? Well, astrology is a Vedic science. Jyotish, it's a Vedic science. And a number of Acharyas, they were great astrologers. Prabhupada's Guru Maharaj, Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati, he was a great astrologer. And similarly, Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur also, he was a great astrologer. They knew astrology. Of course, when it comes to devotional service, it's not very important. But some things can be understood with the help of astrology. It's a Vedic science. It's not. The problem is now is Kali Yuga. 
though most people are not very expert in the astrology. And people are thinking more about money and they will say things and they will make they will tell you things you want to hear so they get more money from you. And people will can cheat you easily. So it's not a hundred percent. That's the point. It's not a hundred percent. Because the astrologers are not very pure. Just like when Lord Chaitanya was born, his mother, Mother Sachi, she was carrying the child in the womb for 14 months and she hadn't delivered the child. So that they were worried, what's wrong? But then her, her father was a great astrologer, Nilamba Chakravarti. And he looked and he saw and said, oh, there's a very auspicious day coming and this child must be waiting for the very auspicious time to take his birth. And that's what happened. The Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared on the Gaur Purnima. He was waiting for that auspicious time to appear. So, of course, sometimes people wait, they, they calculate auspicious time, they'll have a cesarean that time. So, <laughs> <laughs> so that the child can take birth at an auspicious time. <laughs> I just have your mark, it was the same question. I mean, but that he was asking. So we, as devotees, we don't have to refer to the astrology. We don't have to refer to the palmistry. Yeah. Yeah. We don't. We don't have to. But then, was 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 also. Yes, it's a Vedic science, but it's not. It's not a hundred percent. You know. Yeah, Vastu, just like in Chinese they have Feng Shui, so in Vedic culture they have Vastu. So Vastu, it's, it gives you some indications. It can, just like, I know we have one temple, at, at the, te the old temple at Bukhat Nartaja, the old temple. There were two gates, and there was always accident. One gate was kept locked and the other gate was open. And there were always some crashing. There would, regularly there would be some accident take place at that gate. And it happened that one man came who knew Vastu and as soon as he saw, the, he immediately said, Oh, he said, yes. He said, you're going to get so many accidents here. He said, you must immediately lock this gate and open the other gate. And as soon as they did that, no more accidents. They changed everything. Just because they were used, somehow they were using the wrong gate. And when they used this other gate, that immediately no more accidents. And so, some, some help there. Vastu. Vastu tells you where, where you should do your cooking. What place to have the cooking in. What way, how, where, where should be the door, the entrance to that? And sometimes, you know, you have the Vastu all wrong, then you'll be arguing and fighting and quarreling all the time. And when you move everything around, do it according to Vastu, then it becomes peaceful. No more fighting and arguing. So, it's a science. There's some good to it. And certainly when you design a temple, you have to, you should consider Vastu, it helps to do everything. Just like Todu Temple was designed according to Vastu. If you go to a Cambodia, the famous temple in Cambodia, Angkor Wat. Angkor Wat was built a thousand years ago. It's the biggest place in the world, the biggest temple in the world and it was built 1,000 years ago, and it was built exactly according to Vastu. 
so that exactly the sun rises exactly you can see the sunrise just about behind the top. But you should be very careful when you buy the house. You should check the vastu before you buy it. You don't just go and buy the house. You check the vastu and see, is the vastu good? Some things you buy the in the vastu is all wrong and that nobody wants to buy it. It's just a problem. You have to be you have to check these things beforehand. The vastu is very important. It, it makes a big difference. Mama Karanj, I know one student in my group. One devotee told me about Vastu. Uh, one devotee bought an apartment in my group. And he asked uh, how Vastu, what is about Vastu? Is it correct apartment? Walls, some toilet, uh, kitchen, is it correct? But house master said, what are you talking about? There is holy harm around. On the south, call it ham. On the north, call it ham. On the west, call it ham. Uh, so, is it right or not? Um, I, I couldn't understand what you said so well. This is yes, yes, yes. Vasu Sastra thing. It's applicable in holy dams. Is it applicable in the holy dam? Yes. Yeah, definitely, in designing the temple, they have to do it by Vastu. Yeah. I mean, you could say, yeah, well, it's a holy dam, doesn't matter. <laughs> you have to be very Krishna conscious to be able to do things like that. You have to be very, just like, you know, when it comes to things like marriage, are you going to check the astrology beforehand? Well, it's better to check beforehand because it can it can guide you. You know, you want to be sure that it's material, but it can guide you. You want to get some um, something to confirm to is this, is this good or not. So sometimes you can get warnings about these things. You have to be careful. So you buy a house, you want to be careful. Make sure there's no harm to check the bus. To Krishna can bring you above the modes of nature. 
If you're not under the, if you're not surrendered to Krishna, then you're under the control of the material energy. So that's all planned. The material energy has a plan. It's all there on your hand. All the lines on your hand are the indications. You know what's going to happen in this. But once you start chanting Hare Krishna and worshipping the deity, then all these lines are useless. They have no more meaning anymore. Once you chant Hare Krishna. Just like birds come. As soon as you clap your hands, the birds fly away. So all the things change. Once you come before the deities and chant Hare Krishna, everything is changed. The material energy no longer has an effect because you've taken shelter of the holy name. The Lord Krishna is there. So everything is changed. There's, there was this one astrologer, the devotees went to see him and he said, no, I said, I can't help you. He said, you're devotees. He said, because you're doing service for Krishna. He said, all your charts have no meaning anymore because you're devotees. You're doing chanting Hare Krishna. So you're on the spiritual path. Guru Maharaj, this applies just for pure devotees or for even people who start chanting? Uh, well, it depends, of course. Yeah, people just start chanting will have some effect. Krishna says, as you surrender, I reward you accordingly. And so, if somebody is just started chanting, they're devotee. You know, they're not fully devotee but they're on the path, so it's up to them. Mother G is still on the bus too at the housing, so you cannot change your position, so you keep chanting. So. <laughs> well, you can redesign your house. Somebody, who, who did that? Was it Chuang Chuang? Chuang Chuang in Penang? She changed the door of her house because the bus was shot. I, well, I think it was Chuang Chuang, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Charu Yeah, Charu yeah. Mm -hmm. You can You can change the door, change the entrance. So certain things are hard to change, but it's fixed. Huh? Certain things are hard to change, hard to renovate, but it's fixed. Self-value. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's fixed. Renovation takes a lot of money, no point. So, so in my, in my opinion, just chant and all of you just will come. It's up to you. Yeah, it's up to you. One way or another, something will happen. Right? Either you spend the money for renovation, or maybe something bad will happen. You have to spend money to create, to, to, create, to make up for the, whatever bad things.
change the position of a table or chair, but things like toilet cannot be changed. <laughs> things like toilet or washroom. Yeah, difficult for the Okay, I will eat that key. 